In a film or TV show, the music and sound design exist to complement what is being seen on screen. Because these elements are only supposed to aid the visuals, they usually are considered less important, which means that less time and creativity are spent on them. This is not the case for the new Netflix original series, Stranger Things. This particular show paid a lot of attention to the auditory aspects of the story, and it was worth it. Matt and Ross Duffer, the creators of Stranger Things, had a vision of an electronic synth vibe for their 1980s sci-fi show. Matt Duffer spoke to Complex about how he enjoyed what modern filmmakers and composers were doing with electronic synth-based music. Matt said he looked to Cliff Martinez's score for Drive and Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross's score for The Social Network and wanted to emulate a similar vibe. When the Duffers created a trailer for Stranger Things to pitch to producers, they used a song called Dirge by the Austin, Texas-based band Survive. This song had the correct feeling and style the Duffers were looking for, and they ended up using two of the members of the band, Kyle Dixon and Michael Stein, to create the score for the show. Dixon and Stein were able to see the vision of the Duffer Brothers and took their influences from the work of John Carpenter, who directed and scored Halloween. Dixon and Stein have always been a fan of analog machines over their digital counterparts. Survive uses synth machines such as the Prophet 6 and the ARP 2600. These analog machines gave the exact sound the band was looking for, but this also meant that the majority of their songs were recorded live and then sent to the sound mixers as one track. So uh, a lot of times I got one stereo track, sometimes two, and that would be it. A lot of it was because they they used all these. these it's all baked in. It's all baked in because yeah, these yeah. these, these uh, uh, analog synths they could you couldn't punch into it. The music for the show was able to evoke strong feeling while also holding true to the genre and period of Stranger Things. The first episode uses songs to introduce us to some of the characters and enforces a feeling associated with those characters throughout the show. Kyle Stein told New York Times that the Duffers did want the music to be bold to some degree, so that it would get noticed as being a strong part of the show, but they very much wanted it to be reserved. This combination of boldness and control allowed the sound designers to add their own creativity to the story. From the beginning, the sound designers wanted the sound effects to stay true to the period of the 80s. There were very few things that we took license with in saying that, well, it doesn't, let's use a, a more updated sound or something. We tried to hew very close to what things would have sounded like then. Sounds such as rotary phones, televisions, Today, Syria has become a home for cars, buses, gunfire, walkies, it's Mike. Okay. Hey, it's Lucas. and more. These sounds are called diegetic sounds, also known as actual sounds. We see them on screen and expect to hear them. The show's use of these sounds created some of the best moments in the show. For example, when Holly walks down the hall attracted by the Christmas lights, the sound that each light makes is unique and almost musical. Another great moment occurs in Will Byers' fort. The harsh flapping of the fort's entrance punctuates the cold, empty feeling. Stranger Things also uses non-diegetic sounds or sounds that are put in for dramatic effect. Many of these sounds were put in to help carry the emotional power of a shot. But the best part of the sound design was the sci-fi aspects of the show. 
Things like The Entity, The Upside Down, and Eleven's Sensory Deprived World. The sound of The Entity was an extremely important part. This is a monster that we only get small glimpses of for the majority of the show. This means it was up to the sound designers to create the entity sonically and use sound to create tension. Sound designer Chad Hennigan said, I wanted to come up with something similar to Predator in terms of having an identifiable vocal, because initially you don't see the entity. I wanted it to sonically evoke creepiness and intellect. The opening scene of this show sets this feeling up beautifully. The electrical sounds of flickering lights and the alarms give an eerie tense feeling to the scene. This is climaxed by the entity's guttural noises as it attacks the scientist. This scene gives the entity a specific sound that we associate it with for the rest of the show. When Will is taken, our minds listen to the sounds to understand that this is the same monster that attacked the scientist, even though we never get a good look at what it actually is. The idea of the upside down is an interesting part of science fiction that has not been frequently explored. It's another dimension similar to our own, but also very distinct. Hennigan explained that there's a bit of otherworldly winds. The big thing is everything is moving in those sequences, and so I tried not to make anything sound static. That was a big payoff. To the Duffer's credit, they didn't put music all over the upside down. Hennigan created a world that was both similar to our own, but also strangely different by using the regular sounds of our world and distorting them. And as he said, the Duffers trusted the sound designers enough to allow their work to emotionally carry the scene. Probably the most interesting and also one of the hardest environments is the world between worlds, Eleven in the sensory deprivation tank. The sound team had to create sound in a place that exists between worlds, a world of almost complete darkness and silence. Scenes should not be completely quiet or extremely loud for long periods of time. The solution? A thin layer of water on the floor. The water breaks the complete silence and gives a small amount of dynamic flow to the sound. There was an unbelievable amount of creativity involved in the music and sound design. This gave both teams the ability to sonically build scenes, understanding where the music and sound design would each be in control. This seamless back and forth of the two created some of the best moments in the show. Just before we hear that beautiful theme music for the first time, we witness the vanishing of Will Byers. The music is just loud enough to add to the tension. The sound effects carry the scene as the dog barks, adding to the fear. As Will grabs the phone, the music starts to pick up. The sound of impending doom. Hello? Then the monster comes through the phone, distorted and fierce. The sound effect of the entity breaking in and the dial tone add intensity to the already scary scene. The music comes back to the forefront as Will runs across his backyard. But falls away again as Will loads the rifle. Then it gets quiet. Will's uneven breathing is the only thing that breaks the silence. The entity growls. The music and sound crescendo together, creating the climax of the scene. And then... Another amazing blend of sound and music happens at the end of the episode, where the boys meet Eleven for the first time. The hard rain sets the tone. Quietly, the music creeps in. It begins as just a rhythmic hit. And then... Or this scene. Just listen to it. This beautiful collaboration was made possible because both the musicians and sound designers were involved in the show from a very early point. That meant being able to work together and work with the Duffer Brothers to achieve the highest quality film sound. You know, when, when you start getting directors and, and producers and, and those kind of guys thinking about that stuff early, then sound actually has half a chance to, mm -hmm. to make a difference.
This is what happens when directors stop and think about how sound can impact a scene far more than just covering pieces in between dialogue. The sound didn't just exist in the show, the sound enriched the world, making it more interesting and adding more layers of drama and tension. The music carried our emotions and tied us to the characters. So the next time you watch an episode of Stranger Things, don't just watch, listen.